Welcome back to Coding Commanders. I'm Commander Candy, and today I'm going to teach you all about PHP variables, constants, and data types. If you're looking to learn some PHP or get introduced to computer programming, this is definitely going to be the show for you. PHP is a very commonly used language for web development. There's a ton of jobs in it, so let's get started. Okay, to start off, we're going to talk about data types. Now, in PHP and other programming languages, you're going to have variables and constants. What variables and constants do is they represent a value. Say on my website, I want to display my last video. And let's say we're going to call it dollar sign last episode. So dollar sign last episode is going to be equal to a function, which is a block of code that does something that we have written to determine what my last episode is, right? That value is going to vary. On the other hand, constants are values that are always going to be the same. So let's say like I'm four foot 11. So my height, I don't really expect it hopefully to change. Say I was making my dating profile and I want people to know about me. Now my hair color, I change that a lot. So that would be a variable. But my height, four foot 11, I've been four foot 11 since I think like the seventh grade. So I might make that a constant because my height is four foot 11. It's not going to change. For constants and variables, there's different data types because we have different types of data. First one, let's look at is a string. Example of a string would be, see how it says dollar sign name equals Steve? So what a string is, is it contains like letters, words, paragraphs, characters. An integer is a whole number. It could be positive or negative, but there's no decimal or fractions. So you're talking about like one, two, three, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, these are integers. My example on the chart says dollar sign game level equals 10. That's an example of an integer variable. It's a whole number. Float, a float is a decimal, basically. So example, the example I gave here was dollar sign probability equals 0 0.08 for float. Let's use my dating example. So I'm four foot 11, but maybe I'm not gonna put in feet and inches. I'm four feet, 11 inches tall. Maybe I just wanna list that variable in terms of feet. So in feet, I would be about 4.9 feet tall. So dollar sign height equals 4.9. That would be a float or a decimal. I might wanna even put a comment of above height saying height in feet. That way if I go back to it in a couple of years from now, say like my dating app works, I get a boyfriend, we're happy, we break up, it's two years later, I'm looking at the code, then I'll be able to see, oh yeah, I'm doing height in feet. Or if I say I give it to somebody else, say you wanted to put up a dating profile, I send you that code, I put it up on GitHub, you'll be able to clearly see that the height variable is listed in feet. Boolean. That's going to be true or false, a true or false variable. My example here is dollar sign win equals true. Did you win? Yes or no? It's going to be two options, true or false. So you can use Boolean with basically anything that there's two options for. Let's say you're coding a form and on the bottom of the form is a checkbox for people to check if they want to be added to your email list. So you might have a variable dollar sign email list, true or false. Did they give permission to be on your email list or didn't they? We're not going to get into these last three today though. I want to get go over things like um, how to do different operations, conditionals, all that we're going to get to before we do these other <laughs> data types. But I wanted to give you the definitions. Array stores multiple value. My example here is dollar sign cards equals array of hearts, spades, diamonds, and clubs. Okay, 
for a raise. Let's say on my data gap, I have a form for guys to fill out that are interested in going on a date with me. Then once you fill out that form, the information is then passed into my database and stored. Now let's say I have, you know, all these applications in my database because of course everybody wants to date Commander Candy, right? I don't know why I'm single. Now I want to write code and I want to pull the information for each person that applied for a date with me so I can analyze it. Maybe I have an array of eligible dates where the information from each person is put into that array. Okay, so let's say three people apply to date me. Billy, Bob, and Joe. I might have an array called dollar sign date options. And in that array, I'll have three values, three string values, Billy, Bob, and Joe. But maybe they won't be string values. Those could actually be dollar sign Billy, dollar sign Bob, and dollar sign Joe might be other arrays, arrays of their data of the questions I had them answer. Say, um, how well can you program? Where do you live? Do you like kids, right? And say those are three booleans, yes or no, true or false. So inside the array dollar sign date options, I can have three arrays stored, dollar sign Billy, dollar sign Bob, and dollar sign Joe. And dollar sign Billy's gonna be an actual array storing his answers to my questions. And if you're a little bit confused, don't worry about it because I'm going to do a full lesson on arrays and I'm going to make it a lot more clear. <sighs> Objects are defined by its variables and functions. You're going to be able to make classes. My example is class fruit. Um, I'm not really getting into objects today. Null means no value. It's not the same as zero. Zero is a value. Null is empty, completely empty. Think about it like this. Let's say I texted my friend and I said, how many jelly beans do you have? It's she texted me back zero. I got a value from her. She said zero. I know how many jelly beans she has. She has zero. On the other hand, let's say I texted my friend and said, how many jelly beans do you have? And she never responded. That's null. There's no value. I don't know what she has. It's just completely empty. There's no data on it. If you do not have a programming environment set up yet, there are code editor boxes on my website. You can use them to run today's code. I'll link the pages in the video description. I also have tutorials on how to set up the programming environment that I'll be using in this video. Okay, so for those of you that are following along on my last video in the homework that corresponded to it on the website, I had you create a directory called practice. If you did not do that homework assignment, go ahead and first let's cd into slash var slash www slash html slash projects. If you have that projects directory set up, now let's mkdir space practice. This is going to be like homework assignments, things like that, where we're not actually building a full project, but we still want to run our code. Okay, now let's list to make sure it's there. Practice, okay. Now let's CD into practice. Now we're gonna go ahead and open by. That's where we're gonna put our PHP file. So everybody type by space PHP vars dot PHP. Vars is a common abbreviation for variables. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now we're in by. Remember when you first open it up, you're in command mode. So let's go ahead, press the letter I, and go into insert mode. Remember, all PHP must be wrapped in PHP tags. Starting PHP tag, less than, question mark, PHP. Ending PHP tag is going to be question mark greater than, 
let's go ahead and start learning our code. Now, first things first, before I get into the data types and the variables and all that, let's learn how to do a comment. First one I'm going to show you is the one that I usually use, slash, slash. And what a comment is, a comment is like a note in your code. Okay? So what it is, is it's code. Another way to do a comment is you can do a hashtag, I guess you kids call it these days. I call it a pound sign, whatever you want to, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. It's another way to do a comment. So comments are not executed, okay? It's just a note. If you have a comment that's going to take up multiple lines, the way to do that, because with slash, slash, and with pound, that's for a single line. You can't do multiple lines. But if you do slash star, and then star slash, and you wrap your comment in that, you can do multiple lines. So what comments... I cannot spell today. I can't spell any day. Let me not just blame it on today. Comments are used to make your code more readable. So basically what you're gonna do is, if you're about to have a block of code or about to define some variables, you stick in a comment beforehand. So if somebody else is reading your code, or even you go back to it at a later time, you remember what's going on. And you might think that you'll remember without comments, but you never know. As a web developer, you might be writing an application now, and maybe in three years from now, there's a problem with it, an issue with it, something changes, it's no longer compatible, and they call you. You might not remember three years from now like you think you're going to. I deleted all my comments because we didn't really need that right now. So, and I'm going to do new comments. Woo! So first, let's do a string variable. We are going to do dollar sign game dev. Okay, see how that G is lowercase and that D is uppercase? That's called camel case, where you have like every other word. You start off with a lowercase, and then the next word you start with a uppercase letter. That's a good way to do your variables. It's a new way to do it. This is the common, popular way to do it now. The old school way was to do underscore, so that would be lowercase g-a-m-e underscore lowercase d-e-b sometimes i do that because you still see that a lot with like the databases i tend to when i'm dealing with database use underscores when i'm de dealing with logic i tend to do camel case dollar sign game dev equals and then this is a string strings are going to go in quotation marks you could do single or double later on we will learn certain cases where you'll want to do one over the other. Let's go ahead and do double quotes. Game dev equals the meatly. And that's camel case as well. He likes his name camel case. And semicolon. After every line in PHP, we're going to do a semicolon. Most programming languages tend to be like that. Python is not. PHP is. We're going to have to remember that semicolon. The meatly, if you don't know, he's a popular in the game dev. Now let's do dollar sign game equals Fendi and the ink machine. Hopefully I spell things right. I'm a bad speller, so throughout these tutorials I might sometimes spell things wrong. As long as I get the code right, it's okay. The Meatly, his Bendy games, there's different chapters. Right now, chapter one and two's out. Chapter three will be coming out soon. So for integers, I'm going to do dollar sign chapters equals two. No quotes, because it's a number. It's something that we can do calculations with, things like that. No quotes. You can put a two in quotes and make it a string. And actually with PHP, you'd still be able to do calculations with that. But that's an integer. Another example, maybe we're going to rate these games stars. One to five stars. How many stars do you give that game? Integer only. You can't give 
fractional of a star. Only you can give one, two, three, four, or five stars. So I'm going to give Bendy and the Ink Machine five stars. Boom. Next, let's do float. That's a decimal. For, okay, for float, let's do dollar sign, total hours played. And let's make that equal 50.57. Boom. Average hours played. Let's say it's average hours per day, and we're going to do 9.5. Okay. Next, let's do Boolean. That's our true-false, remember? Put that there. True-false. Let's say dollar sign finish. Did you finish a game, yes or no? I'm going to have that equal to true. Let's do another one. Dollar sign own. Do you own the game, yes or no? I'm going to say true. Okay, now let's go on to constants. Remember, constants are values that don't change, and constants are normally written in capital letters so we can see them loud and clear when we use them. What's an example of that? How many days are in a week? There's seven days in a week. That's always going to be the same. So let's do that. Define is how you're going to start, then you're going to do parentheses. Inside the parentheses, let's do some quotation marks. And we're going to type num days, OK? Then beside that, we're going to do a comma. And then we are going to write our value, which is 7. And don't forget your semicolon. Okay, what I want you to do now in my video description, I do have the link to my written out lesson. There's homework there. Go ahead, do that homework. Make sure you comprehend. You might want to think about subscribing and hitting that bell to turn on your notifications so you know when my next PHP video comes out. I'm going to be doing HTML and PHP tutorials pretty much side by side. We're going to need to know how to make an HTML form before we get to PHP post. If you don't know what I'm talking about yet, don't worry about it because we ain't there yet. If you have any questions, please comment below. I have been able to respond to, I think, just about every comment, if not every comment. I'm going to be live streaming this week. You might want to look out in my video description for more details on that. If you would like to win a Coding Commanders t-shirt and have your needs heard by me, also comment below. Let me know what times and days are and aren't good for you for live streaming. I want you to be able to come, get your questions answered. If you have any problems with the homework, any questions about my videos or my written lessons, the live stream is going to be the place to be. So I want to make sure that I do it at the time so the people following my curriculum are available. Please comment and let me know when you are and are not available. Thank you again for watching and until next time, happy coding!